when you can learn that positive obsession is a gift, you are 99% of the way there. There is always a way that you can monetize it if you learn to use that as a gift instead of making that thing be a bad burden in your life. entrepreneurs. Okay. I'm super pumped to be here because I'm obsessed with you. Yes. I said it. I'm obsessed with you. Okay. I want to talk to you about being unapologetic about being obsessed with the things that you love. And the thing that I love isn't actually a thing at all. It's people. I love people. And my husband, who's the person who knows me probably the best out of anybody in this world knows how much I love people where I find out about somebody's goals and dreams and I make it my personal mission to help them accomplish it. And there's been several times in my life where I'm trying to help somebody and it's not working. And I will, I will cry myself to sleep. I'm begging God, please. Like I'll pray for the person's breakthrough because I'm so obsessed with helping them feel empowered and, you know, achieve their dreams. A lot of people will put you down for being obsessed with the things that you love. You know, I want to take my sister-in-law, for example. She, a few years ago, came out of the pandemic, had gained a couple pounds, was still skinny, but whatever. She had gained a couple pounds and she became obsessed with counting your macronutrients, weighing your food, working out, where she is no joke. She is a completely different person because of how obsessed she is with her goals. She has the perfect little fit body and homegirl is still weighing her egg whites every morning and her coffee creamer. And, you know, people that see that they go, gosh, she's like too obsessed. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's talk about that. She's obsessed with being fit. She's obsessed with being healthy. She doesn't want to go back to the place of not being able to fit in her clothes, to obsessing about what to eat and to not overeat. And she's actually found freedom in counting her macronutrients and weighing her food. And she likes to talk about fitness a lot. I mean, that's the thing she likes to talk about, right? And people on the outside who might be struggling in their health, are the ones that judge her the most because they're like, she's too obsessed. And it's like, maybe you should be a little more obsessed. You know what I mean? But if you love fitness, if you love health, stay in the gym for two hours. I don't care. Like go do it. And the people that are saying negative things about you, they could say negative things about you. Like how does that affect you? Pray a hedge of protection around you and say, no, I'm not gonna let that get to me. Stay up late working on your business if you need to right? If that's the only time you have alone because of the kids and you're working a full-time job and you need some quiet time to think about what your vision is, stay up late working on that plan. Or like me, I wake myself up early. I'm in this stage right now where so many things are changing. If you listened into the last couple of episodes, you know, Chase's business has completely skyrocketed and you know, we're definitely changing dynamics in our relationship. And in order for me to work on myself at all, I'm getting up at four o'clock to pray, to, to get my mind in the right spot and to really become like the wife that he needs me to be right now. I've got to put in those extra hours in the morning on getting this mindset right, (laughs) because it is a shift girlfriend. Okay. Positive obsession. I truly believe is a gift And it's one that if you could really learn how to harness it as the gift that it is, it will pay you back, right? You think it's a gift given to you, but that gift can actually pay you in some way. So my sister-in-law, for instance, I'm going to go back to her. She became obsessed. She completely transformed her body, transformed her mindset around food. People started asking her. And she goes, well, I think I want to like do some coaching. And I literally coached her through, okay, here's what you need to do. Post what you're eating every day. 
And she goes, people don't want to see that. I go, yeah, they do. That's why people are even following you. She started posting every single day what she eats. You guys could go follow her. I'll link her up in the show notes. She shows every day. And she eats the same thing every day. People still love it. Okay. They, it's like something that they've grown to love. We started her doing reels and she had a reel go viral. She was able to grow her following by 10,000 people and really increase her influence. She has people come to pay her to do macronutrient coaching for them and mindset coaching around food. And she's made a complete full-time business. She doesn't even work full-time, but she monetizes her passion so well using social media that she's making a full-time income from home, just doing the things that she loves. That's a, that's a game changer right there. If you start to think about that, wow. She monetized what she loves. And now I'm so excited to see her just absolutely thriving. When you can learn that positive obsession is a gift, you are 99% of the way there, okay? Because you're 99% ahead of most people. Because most people, they'll go, oh my gosh, I'm so obsessed with crafts. I'm so obsessed with TV. I'm so obsessed with music. And they say it's a bad thing. Where it's like, hey, if I was somebody who's obsessed with TV, I'd start a podcast on my favorite TV shows and try to get celebrities on my podcast to talk about the TV shows that they've been in. There is always a way that you can monetize it if you learn to use that as a gift instead of making that thing be a bad burden in your life. So I want you to start thinking about those things that you get really passionate about, those things that you are obsessed with, that somebody has told you in your life, oh my God, you're obsessed. People tell me that all the time. Kayla, you're obsessed with business. Okay, really what they don't understand is I'm obsessed with people. And I just want, I want to help everybody win. And sometimes I do that to my detriment, right? But if I just focus on the positive part of it, the positive part about it is that I have ideas percolating up in this mind all the time. Then now people invest a lot of money to get an idea out of here for them. They really do. And so I've learned how to harness that. And I go, I'm only going to work with people that I'm super excited about and like can give them an incredible idea because that's how my mind works. Okay. So I've learned how to really monetize that and use it as a gift in my life. That's really transformed my family's life because of my coaching. Okay. So too many people right now listening in, watching this on YouTube are settling for a mediocre average life. And I want to remind you, if you're listening into this right now, you are not meant for mediocre. You are meant to reach your potential, to find your capacity and those passions, those obsessions that you and you alone have are made for you to thrive. Let that sink in. They were made for you to thrive. I have a client. She is what is considered OCD. Like legit has been clinically diagnosed as that. She absolutely loves organization. She does not like clutter anywhere in her house. Okay. She made a complete business around organizing, time management, project management, and now she's able to sell her planners and courses to people to manage their time and to keep clutter out of their life. So what was a burden to her in a way, right? Where she can't handle the clutter anywhere. She's learned now to go, Ooh, how can I help other people get rid of their clutter and change my life at the same time financially? When you realize that you are so unique, God has a specific purpose just for you. And you start walking around like there is royalty in your DNA. You remember who the heck you are and how much goodness and abundance God has for you specifically in your life. You have a little more pep in your step and you start to go, hmm, 
The quality of my questions will determine the quality of my life. So if I ask myself a positive question, how can I make my obsession a gift to the world? Just right there alone. I'm sure you have some ideas coming through. Start writing it down. Start to think about this, percolate on this. When you go to bed at night, ask God, say, Lord, you know, I have this certain passion. Maybe reveal to me in my dreams how I'm going to give it to the world. Please. I need help. I need creativity. Take some time. Go out in nature. Just, I love to go out on the sand and just look at the ocean and just have a clear mind. And all of a sudden I start getting downloads about certain things that I've been percolating on. So remember, you're unique. Your obsessions are a gift to the world. And everything that comes into your path from here on out, look at it as a direction for you. It's a guide for you on your journey to success as an entrepreneur. So when, when things, when people ask questions, when something triggers you out there and you're going, okay, that was meant for me. How am I going to use my obsession? The thing that I'm good at, the thing that I'm extremely knowledgeable about, how am I going to solve that problem to get me to the next leg of the journey? So remember, go after your obsessions. You're allowed it. And I'll see you on the next episode. 